Hello, welcome to the last session in the series of software demonstrations. In this lecture, we are going to study how to use computer aided design tools for the design of solid state microwave circuits. I will demonstrate this with the help of a mixer design example. Let's begin. So the software platform or the CAD tool that we are going to use in this particular lecture is National Instruments AWR Design Environment Platform. This platform consists of three different tools. The first one is Microwave Office which is used for RF and microwave circuit design. The second one is Visual System Simulator which is mainly used for system level simulation. And third is Analog Office which is typically used for analog RFIC designs. All these three tools have facility of linear and non-linear circuit simulations, EM simulations and circuit and system level co-simulations. In this lecture, we are going to focus on microwave office and we are going to use linear and non-linear circuit simulators available in the microwave office. So let's revise for given specifications. First, we choose the mixing device that we are going to use. After that, we choose the type of the circuit that we are going to use and then we design the circuit which involves designing various components involved in the circuit. Then we have simulation and finally we optimize the circuit to achieve the desired performance. In this example, we are going to use diode as the mixing device and the circuit we have chosen is simple single diode mixer. The specifications are we have an RF frequency at 4.25 gigahertz, we have the desired IF at 500 megahertz which is 0.5 gigahertz and depending on this RF and IF specifications the LO which is local oscillator frequency chosen is 3.75 gigahertz. The circuit is as follows as you can see there is an RF LO isolator circuit to isolate the RF and LO ports. Then we have the matching circuit, this is the mixing device and we have an IF filter. The mixing device which is the diode is nothing but a short key diode, the part number is BAT1503W. This is an Infineon diode of chip form which can be used in microstrip design. The steps or the sequence in the design that we are going to follow is this, so first is this diode, we are going to model this diode in this platform. After that, we will see the input reflection coefficient at the RF frequency and based on that, we will design the matching network. After that, we will design the RF and LO isolation circuit and finally, the result of this will simulate, we will see the spectrum output at the output of the mixer and then accordingly, we will design the IF filter to filter out the undesired frequency components and finally, we will get the IF output. Once all this is done, we will simulate the entire circuit to get the conversion loss performance, the isolation performance and noise figure performance of the mixer. Let's move to the software part. Whenever you open the NIAWR software, the user interface looks like this. At the top, you have the project name which is currently untitled project because we haven't saved the project yet. You have couple of toolbars. And on the left you can see you have three browsers, one is the project browser, another one is the element browser and the third one is the layout browser. So the project browser consists of various things, first you have design nodes, you can have project options, you have global definitions, data files, system circuit diagrams, graphs and so on. So let's first start with the design nodes, you can double click on it and you see that a uh, file will be opened, you can type in whatever you want in this file. So let's say we start with single diode mixer design F RF is 4.25 gigahertz F IF <coughs> is 0.5 gigahertz FLO is 3.75 gigahertz. Now you can type in whatever you want in the design nodes and we'll first save the project. We'll give appropriate name single diode mixer. I'll save this here. So the project is now saved. 
So first thing we are going to build the diode model. So go to circuit schematics, right click, new schematic. I will name this as diode model. In this we are going to import first an element, go to nonlinear, diode, if you drag this you can read the description. We are going to use S diode which is PIE's non-geometric junction diode model. Just drag this into the circuit schematic window, click it, it will be placed. Now, if you double click on this, you will see the options related to this. Right now, you do not see anything. You have to click on show secondary and you will see all the diode parameters which are basically diode junction parameters which are specific to a particular diode. Now, we will fill these parameters based on the device which we have chosen the manufacturer provides the data sheet of this diode or you have SPICE models of such devices available on internet. So we have the SPICE model available with us, we will choose that and this is the SPICE model file and as you can see there are different specifications which are mentioned over here. So IS reverse saturation current is 74 nano amperes, N is 1.07, RS which is the series resistance is 5 ohms and so on. We will fill the data using this file into our model. Now this diode is of chip form, so it has a package associated with it and the package will have some parasitic inductance and capacitance values and the SPICE model also contains these parasitic values and we will include these values in the diode model. So, SOD 323 is the package and this file contains the parasitic. So, this is your chip which is diode and you see that the inductance in series, a capacitance in parallel and you have two lead inductances. So, we will build this model in our file, we will go to elements we will go to lumped, we will have inductor, we will choose inductor closed form, drag, place it here, we will go to capacitor, capacitor closed form, we will place it here, just zoom out a bit and we have two more inductances at here and at the output port. Now the values of this inductors and capacitor have to be specified. So instead of specifying the values directly, what I am going to do is to create variables. So for example, this inductance has a name LAI. So I will place this value, you just have to double click on that particular L. So LAI, I specify it as LAI, then this is LAO, this is LAO, right? And as you can see, all these things are in red because I haven't specified the values to these variables. So click on here, click on equation, place it here and then specify LAO is equal to LAO is 0.65 nano, 0.65, no need to specify nano as it is already specified here. Now I will connect this, for connections just move your mouse to the unconnected part, a symbol will appear, just left click and go to the next part, click again, a wire will automatically be connected. So I will do the connections like this. Okay. At the two ends of these inductors, what I am going to put are the ports. So just go to port and place a port here, take another port, right click to rotate, 
place it here. So you have port 1 at this end, port 2 at this end. The reason for putting the ports will be clear after some time. Now this terminal is the anode of the diode, this is the cathode. So the port 1 corresponds to anode, I will create a symbol saying A and for this I will say the pin ID as C. Okay, so anode and cathode. I save the project. Now, next point is we want to test this model of the diode and we will see that with the help of the IV curve of the diode, it should match with the data sheet specifications. Go back to project browser, circuit schematics, right click, new schematic, diode, IV, test bench is the name that will give to this file and in this file now I want to include whatever circuit I had in the diode model. What I will do, I will create a sub circuit, diode model is already there, normal selected, hit ok and you will see that now the entire circuit which has been designed here is now taken as a black box. Okay? Now this symbol can be changed, just double click on it, go to symbols and you can choose any symbol that you want. We will choose a diode IC symbol for this because it represents a diode IC. Okay. Now this is the anode and cathode of this diode. Okay? Now, simple to measure the IV curve, I will ground the cathode. At the anode, I want to provide a voltage sweep. For that, I will go to elements, I will go to measurement devices, I will go to IV and I will take a DC current slash voltage curve tracer. I will put it here. I will just drag this here, I will connect this to anode, this is a sweep port. The V sweep ranges from 0 to 4. Now it is worth looking at the data sheet of the diode to check what voltage range we should have. So let us have a look at the data sheet, this is the diode that we have selected and we see that in the curve. The voltage variation is from 0 to 1 volt. So we will stick to that range, so 0 to 1 with a step of 0.1 let us say and my circuit test bench to measure the IV characteristic of this diode is complete. Now I will create a new graph, so click on this add a new graph, diode IV is the name I will give to this graph and let it be of rectangular type create you will see a blank graph here. Now we have to add measurement to this graph right click add measurement go to nonlinear current select IV curve data source there are various options and we want to choose diode IV test bench and IV curve dot IV1 sweep which is the variable that we are going to use is used for the x axis and step is being ignored. So we will just choose a simple 0 volt for the step and the simulator is app lag DC and hit apply ok. To simulate we use this button which is analyze and we see that the diode IV curves appear. I will just drag this particular thing, right, and I will check the values of diode currents and voltages. Right click, add marker, click on the graph, and you see that 0 0.4031 is the voltage across the diode, and 13.92 is the current flowing through the diode. Now to verify 
that we are getting the correct results, we will use the DC characteristic of the diode which is specified over here. So, for forward voltage VF with different IF which is the diode current. So, for 1 milliampere you should get the forward voltage in the range of 0.16 to 0.32 volts. We will check that. So, to move this marker to 1 milliampere right click marker search value of 1 find Y value which is the current and search towards the left search. So, for 1 milliampere the voltage is 0 0.2366 volt. In the data sheet you have nearly the same value which is 0 0.23 volt. Similarly, for value of 10 milliampere I will search right. You see that the voltage is 0 0.3685 volt which is in the same range. So, this confirms that whatever diode model that we have built is in sync with the diode data sheet provided by the manufacturer. Cancel this. Now, we will move to diode biasing project, circuit schematics, new schematic, name it as diode bias, create. Again, I will add the sub circuit. So, instead of going to the circuit again, I will just copy this, I will paste here, right click to rotate, anode, cathode, I will ground the cathode, okay. moving this a bit. Now, for biasing, I need a RF choke to avoid the RF current to flow into the DC path. So, first I will take an inductor, go to lumped, inductor, closed form, then I will have to take a resistor to limit the current that is flowing into the diode. I will place a resistor over here. Then in between this resistor and the supply voltage, I have to put capacitors to remove the transients and high frequency noise. So, I will go to capacitors, I will choose capacitor, I will place one here, copy paste, I will place the second here, paste, third here. Okay? And then I have to choose a DC voltage supply. So, I will go to sources which is this DC and I will select a DC voltage source, drag it and you can right click rotate and place it in this fashion. Okay. We are going to use supply voltage of 3.3 we will first complete the circuit, we will place a ground, we will connect it, we'll connect this again, and based on the diode IV curve, what we are going to use is this particular biasing point. So, current of 10 milliamperes and voltage of 0 0.368 which is around 0 0.37 volt. The resistor which is close by giving these values is around 270 ohms based on the calculations. So, we will put the resistor value of 270 ohms. The inductance value for avoiding RF current is 68 nano Henry, 68 nano. and the capacitance is to bypass the noise and transients is this is 100, pic, 100 picofarad, this is 1.2 nano and this is around 1 micro, so 1 E 6 pico right? and the voltage is 3.3. .3. Now, to see that appropriate voltages and currents are set across the diode, we are going to use this tool called annotate 
add new annotation to this circuit. So, we, we are going to use DCIA which is annotate DC input current for all elements. The circuit is diode bias current apply and you have DC VA apply. Then if you simulate you see that the current that is flowing into the diode is around 10.8 milliamperes and the voltage set across the diode is 0.38 volts which is quite close to the desired biasing point. This confirms that our biasing is correct. Now to add circuit around this diode we need to avoid DC current flowing into the other circuit elements. So what we will do? We will add DC block capacitors at the input port and as well as at the output side. We will connect it. The value of this capacitor is approximately 100 picofarad which will pass the RF current but block the DC. Now this is the input of the diode, this is the output. I will place ports, so, port 1 at this end, port 2 at this end. This is the input, so I will create an ID for it in, ok. This is the output, so I will create an ID for that which is out. And we are all set to apply high frequency signals input to this diode output will be taken at port 2. Okay. So, this is our complete diode bias circuit. The next step what we are going to do, we, we will see the RF input impedance of this diode and accordingly we will design the RF matching network. For that again create a new schematic, right click new schematic, I will name it as RF match test bench. create <coughs> and we are going to use this diode bias circuit as a sub circuit diode bias ok. As you can see this is the in this is the out. Now simply put ports at the in and out ports of the diode and we are interested in looking at the S11 at port 1 provided at the RF frequency. To set the frequency go to the current schematic which is RF match test bench, right click on it, go to options, uncheck use project defaults. We want a single point operation because currently the RF frequency is 4.25 gigahertz and hit apply. So, the circuit will be analyzed only at 4.25 gigahertz. Okay. We want to plot the S11 on the Smith chart. So, create a new graph. The type should be Smith chart. Name, I will say S11 RF. Create. This is the Smith chart. To add measurements, right click, add new measurement, go to linear, port parameters, S parameters, choose appropriate circuit which is RF match test bench, S11 we are going to see and here select use for x axis. Okay. Now you see that a marker is added over here. If you right click, add marker, click on it, you will see that the frequency is 4.25 gigahertz, the normalized R is 0.53 and normalized X is 0.41.
So, the technique that we are going to use or the circuit that we are going to use in this particular case is single stub matching technique. For that you know the procedure. So, first we have a series microstrip line in single stub matching. So, go to elements, microstrip, lines, emlin, drag and place it over here. Now, this microstrip line has to have some substrate definition and because a single substrate will be created for all the components being used in the circuit, we will go to global definitions and we will add a microstrip substrate definition at this particular point. So, for that go to elements, go to substrates which is here, click on it and choose M sub, drag it here place it. We are going to use an RT duroid substrate. So, 2.2 H is 0.787 mm. Thickness of the conductor will be 0.035 mm which is 35 micron. Tan delta is going to be 0 0.0007 and this is 2.2 and the name of the substrate is sub 1. Save it we can close this, go back to our design, right click on it, go to properties, M sub, you can set it to sub 1. Okay. Now, the width and the length of this line which is a part of the matching network, we all know that the width should be corresponding to the characteristic impedance of 50 ohm. So, I will set it to W50 which is a variable and length I set it to L underscore line. I will have these two equations. So, W 50 is the width corresponding to the substrate that we just defined and the characteristic impedance of 50 ohm. Now, to calculate this width, we will use a tool. Go to tools, TX line. The substrate details you can enter here 2.2, loss tangent 0 0.0007 and the copper should be selected as the conductor. The substrate height is 0.787, thickness is 35 micron. The impedance required is 50 ohm, the frequency is 4.25 gigahertz and currently the length is not of a concern, we are concerned about the width. So, just click on this arrow and you will see that the width is 2.38 mm. So, I will add W 50 equal to 2.38. L line has been frozen to 16.85 mm. Next task I want to add a stub. So, I will again drag it. I will go to microstrip. I will go to lines. This is the open circuited stub we will drag it, rotate and we will place it here okay? and again I will connect it like this. Again the stub has a width corresponding to a 50 ohm characteristic impedance. So, I will set it to W 50 which is already defined to 2.8, 2.38 mm. L I will again create a variable L stub. The stub length is frozen to 19.5. So, a line length of 16.85 mm and stub length open circuited stub length of 19.5 mm will give me desired matching which is at the center of the Smith chart. So, this is my independent matching network. We will stop at this point. We study rest of the circuit in the next lecture. Thank you.